ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Indeed the praise is for Allah. We praise him, we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils that are within ourselves and from our bad deeds. Whom so ever Allah guides, there's no one that can lead this person astray. And whom so ever Allah leads astray, then there is no guide for him. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah who is alone with our partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant of Allah and the last messenger to all of mankind. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah with the right that he should be feared with and do not die in Ashua Muslim. practicing the deen of al-islam o mankind fear your lord who has created you from a single person and from that person created his mate and from them to scatter countless men and women throughout the earth and fear allah from whom you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the relations with the wombs that have bore you indeed allah is a watcher over you O oh, you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct in order that Allah may rectify for you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved a tremendous achievement as to what follows certainly the most truthful speech in the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil of the affairs are the newly invented matters in the deen and every newly invented matter in the religion is innovation and every innovation is going astray and every going astray is in the hellfire our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam He informed us of the reality of this dunya. When he mentioned sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ad-dunya sijnu al-mu'min wa jannatu al-kafir. That the life of this world is the prison of the believer and the paradise for the disbeliever. This statement of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
establishes that the believer in this life has restrictions placed upon him. These restrictions are the hudud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is not for us to, to transgress the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah has legislated the legislation for our own good and for our benefit, for our safety and protection. So when we practice the deen of Al-Islam, this is where our safety lies. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, Allahumma aslih li deeni alladhi fihi ismatu amri Allahumma aslih li deeni alladhi fihi ismatu amri O oh Allah, rectify for me my religion. That which is the protection of my affairs. Rectify for me my deen. This is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam making dua to Allah. Allahumma aslih li deen. Whose religion is better than the religion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No one. The Prophet's practice of Islam is the best practice of Islam. But this is from the servitude of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the humbleness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and a lesson that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is teaching us. That our protection is in our religion. So he made the dua, O oh Allah, rectify for me my deen, that which is within it, the protection of my affairs. If we want protection in our affairs, our deen has to be rectified. Our deen has to be upright. Our deen has to be one that is sound. This is where we will find the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So while we are in this prison of this dunya, we need protection. The protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The protection that we find in the deen of al-Islam. Protection from who? Iblis. His army. Protection from the fitan. Ma dhahara minha wa ma batan. That which is apparent from the trials and tribulations. And that which is hidden. Min fitna to shubuhat wa fitna to shahawat. The fitna of doubts and the fitna of desires. We need protection from these affairs. The protection is in the deen. If we want a good life while we are in this prison, then upon us is iman. And upon us is righteous actions. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, Man amila saliha, min dhakarin, Whoever does a good deed, whether a male or a female, and the person is a believer, we will cause him to live a good life. We're in prison. The dunya is our prison. Because of the restrictions, but there's still a way for us to have a good life in this prison. Through faith and through righteous actions. Whether a male or a female, the person who believes, man or woman, but the person along with the belief does good. Not just have Iman in the heart and Iman on the tongue. But there must be Iman in our actions. Salah, Zakat, Siyam, Hajj, Biru Walidain, Ikram al Ikram al All of this is a part of the righteous actions and Iman which causes us to have a good life. Staying away from the Haram. All of this is a part of Iman. All of this is a part of having a good life in this dunya. 
And all of us, we strive to have a good life. Many people have traveled from different lands to come to America for the good life. We know this is a fact. But the true and the real good life is in Iman. The true and real good life is in Amal Salih. Faith and righteous actions. This is the true good life while we are in prison. The Kafir, he lives his best life. And this is their statement. I'm living my best life. Meaning upon sin, upon disobedience, no limitations, no morals, no restrictions because they don't answer to a higher authority. So they think. But we answer to the higher authority. And we know that this life is not the only life. So we prepare ourselves to leave this prison one day. Sheikh al Islam Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned that the person who dies, he is either getting out of prison or he is entering into prison. The person who dies. The person who dies is either getting out of prison or he is entering into prison. What does this mean? The person who dies who's getting out of prison, that's the believer. He dies, he's leaving this world. He dies, he's leaving this world. He's leaving the prison and he's heading to paradise. But the kafir, when he dies, he's leaving his paradise and he's going to prison in Jahannam. Simple. The question that must be asked, are we leaving prison when we die or are we going to prison when we die? What is going to be our state when we leave this dunya? Because everyone is leaving this dunya. No one is staying back. Every soul should taste death and then to us is your return. Everybody is leaving here. Don't worry. Your time is coming. My time is coming soon. But how are we going to leave here? That's the question. That's what's important. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالِ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ Actions are based upon how, we, how they end. We've heard this before. We heard this statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before. But the question is, are we striving to have a good ending? It's one thing to hear a verse in the Quran. To hear in hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then it's another thing to implement it and to prepare for what it entails. We have to rectify ourselves. We have to strive to do better. Each day, Allah gives us life. It's a ni'mah. It's another chance. Another opportunity. We have to be grateful for it by doing good. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi yajma'een amma ba'd Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al-Mu'min al-Qawi Khayrun وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل خير. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he stated, the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. 
But in both of them there is good. Here the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam divides the believers into two categories. The strong believer and the weak believer. The strong believer, this person is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer. But who is the strong believer? The strong believer is the one who is strong in his iman. Strength here is not referring to physical strength alone. More so, strength here is referring to religious strength. The strength of one's faith. Yes, physical strength is khair in al-Islam. Look how the physical strength of Umar ibn al-Khattab benefited the Muslims when they were in Mecca. His physical strength. As it was stated that the Muslims were not able to pray next to the Kaaba until Umar ibn al-Khattab accepted Islam. Because of his physical strength. And because of the fear he put into the hearts of the people by Allah's permission. The people were afraid of Umar. And then especially after he became a believer, he became a Muslim, the fear of the people increased for Umar ibn al-Khattab. And this was a fadl min Allah Azzawajal upon Umar ibn al-Khattab. But he was physically strong. As it was known that Umar radiallahu an, he had a fight with a jinn. A physical fight with the jinn and he defeated the jinn. As was mentioned by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that a man had a fight, a wrestling contest or a match, a fight with the jinn and he defeated the jinn. And then the jinn told him to say or recite ayatul kursi before entering into the home and this will remove any shayateen from the home. And then the people, they asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, are you talking about Umar ibn Khattab? He said, who else? Umar ibn Khattab was physically strong, but he also was religiously strong. And his religious strength was greater than his physical strength. So the hadith, Barakallah Fikum, is more so referring to the religious strength, not excluding the physical strength. So those who are religiously strong, these are the ones who are better and more beloved to Allah than those who have weakness and are weak in their religion. But look what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So that those who are weak in religion don't give up. He said, but there's still good in both of them. There's still good in both of them. If Allah has blessed us to be strong in our deen, praise Allah. But don't belittle your brother who is weak in his deen. Lift him up, encourage him to get stronger, help him. Cooperate and help one another upon righteousness and piety. And don't help one another upon sin and transgression. When Abdullah, ibn Him when Abdullah Himar, and that was his nickname, Himar, but he used to make the Prophet laugh. But he was struggling with addiction. He used to drink a lot. And he would be brought in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he would be punished. And one day one of the companions, they said, Ma akhtara ma yu'ta bik, la'anatullah alayk. How many times you have been brought for this crime of drinking? May the curse of Allah be upon you. What did the messenger say? Did he say, Ami? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reprimanded him. He said, لا تلعنه فإنه يحب الله ورسوله Don't curse him. For indeed, he loves Allah and his messenger. He's weak. We're going to punish him. But don't curse him. Don't make dua that he's outside of the mercy of Allah. It's not shaitan. It's not Iblis. Iblis is the one who is mal'oon, outside of the mercy of Allah. Don't curse your brother because of his weakness. Don't curse your brother because he's struggling with some sin. 
Because indeed he's a Muslim, he loves Allah and his messenger, he has weakness. What the Prophet went on to say, وَلَا تُعِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ عَلَىٰ أَخِيكُ And don't help the shaitan against your brother. How does a person help the shaitan against his brother? By putting despair in the heart of one's brother, make him think that he's no good, he has no value, so he might as well just keep on sinning. He might as well just keep on sinning. This is destruction. This is what the shaitan wants. That the Muslim who is a sinner, he gives up. And he thinks there's no hope for him, there's no chance for him. So he just continues disobeying Allah. And maybe even eventually leave Islam. Don't help the shaitan against your brother. Give your brother encouraging words. Give your brother advice. Warn your brother against the hellfire and the punishment of Allah. Yes, we don't leave this out. We warn them that sin is a path of destruction. Sin is a path that leads to hell. We warn them, but we don't curse him. We don't make dua that he's outside of the mercy of Allah. Perhaps we were once that individual. And then Allah favored us. Did we forget where we come from? Did we forget we were the ones that using drugs and being oppressive to the people? We forget that we were the ones in the street living a low life, being a dirty, rotten scoundrel. Some of us, we come from that. Some of us, that was our case. That was our situation. But Allah favored us to be better. So don't look down on your brother who's in that state. Perhaps he can reach where you are at or be better than you. Make dua for your brother. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him strength in his faith. Be a good example for your brother. Take your brother by the hand, bring him to the masjid. Take your brother by the hand, pull him away from the evil. Don't help the shaitan against your brother. Help him to have a good life while we're in this prison. We need one another while we're in this prison. And anyone who's ever been in prison in this dunya like Rikers Island or upstate New York and the likes, you know the importance of brotherhood inside of the prison. The prison of the dunya is similar because we have so many enemies from Iblis and the fitting and those who are following the way of Iblis, they are against the believers. They're attempting to lead the believers astray from the path of Allah. We need one another. Our strength is in our brotherhood and sisterhood. Our strength is in worshipping Allah together and maintaining the practice of Islam together as a community. That's where our strength is at. Individually, the shaitan can pick us off. Like the sheep that strays away from the flock and the wolf is there waiting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be from the strong believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the weak believers to gain strength in Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for our shortcomings and wrongdoings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who will be in the paradise in the hereafter and not in prison in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who hear a good word and follow it. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa subhanaka allahum wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayhi. Akim as-salam.